Hello and welcome to Witness. I'm Raggy Omar. Australia is the driest continent in the world and it's suffering one of the worst droughts in its history. Small rural communities are struggling to survive as farmers are forced off their land and people leave the bush for the cities. Woodna is a small farming community in the driest state of all, South Australia, and it's watching the population melt away. Tim Schultz, the mayor of Woodna, is desperate to find ways of boosting the town's dwindling population. Under his direction, the council have tried many different methods, but with little success. So now they've resorted to giving away chunks of the town. In Woodna, you can buy a plot of building land for just one Australian dollar. But Mayor Schultz knows that even that won't attract incomers unless there's something to put the town firmly on the map. Something like a giant granite sculpture in homage to the Australian farmer. Australian filmmaker Matthew Bates followed life in Woodna for a full year. His film, Breaking the Drought, follows the hopes, the dreams and the harsh realities of drought-stricken outback Australia to find out if the mayor's measures can really save Woodna from extinction. Australia is suffering its worst drought on record. With climate change affecting the weather patterns on which farmers have traditionally relied, small rural communities across the country are at breaking point. The town of Woodna in the mid-north of South Australia is no exception. If it doesn't rain this year, farmers will be forced off the land and the town will die. Andrew Boylan is a third generation wheat and sheep farmer. He and his wife Paige are facing bankruptcy if this season turns into another drought year. We're pretty well at the end of our tether now. Like the banks have said, this is what you got left. This is what you got to play with. Grain prices are fantastic. Sheep prices are fantastic. But still, you have to grow it and you have to get your stock good enough mm, to, to, to market. It. But unless it rains, you don't grow a damn thing. And your sheep don't get fat, so you can't sell it. So getting back to that terrible question is, what am I going to do if it doesn't this season or what we won't do is, I, well, we just try not to think about it. As the drought worsens, people are packing up and leaving wooden. The population loss is at crisis point and something needs to be done. Tim Schultz, a third generation farmer and mayor of Woodna, will stop at nothing to keep his hometown alive. This year coming up that we're going into is really, I think, make or break. So we really have two choices. We can either just whine away and grizzle about what's happening or we can say, no, if we go down, we'll go down fighting. We're standing in the middle of the seven allotments that uh, have a price tag of a dollar. It's actually a dollar ten. You've got to include the GST. As part of Tim's master plan to revitalise Woodner, the council has developed these blocks and is giving them away for one dollar. It has power and water and it's paved and curbed, so it's really ready to uh, build on. While a dollar block may be a great deal for potential settlers, it's a big risk for a community struggling with rural recession. Just heading into Woodner now and check out our block. It starts from there. Welcome to Woodner. Hopefully I'll set up a nice little plumbing business in this town and so we're just going to have to see how it goes. We, we just play it by ear, we have everything we do anyway. With the last plumber leaving town and the local school desperate for children to fill its classes, the Martin family meet the council's requirements to receive a dollar block. This is it. The beast made it. <laughs> what do you reckon, fellas? Be all right? Yeah. With the safe arrival of the first new dollar block settlers, Tim's plans to save his town reach new heights. Can he keep attracting people to Woodner even in the midst of a drought? Extreme questions sometimes call for extreme answers. And when you're talking about town survival, looking outside the square is not just a phrase, it actually really has to happen. On another vacant block in Woodner, Tim's wildest scheme is taking shape. In Australia, country towns have traditionally erected big things to attract tourist dollars. Tim's council has commissioned a work of serious public art that he hopes will make Woodner a national icon of rural life and attract people to the town despite the drought. We identified a long time ago that to differentiate yourself in the market, and that's what it's about, we needed to hang our hat on, on something 
and uh, what hadn't been done in any community was pure artwork. Can you give me the, uh, the small uh, pointy hammer? It's here on the scaffold. Marianne Bekic, a Croatian-born artist, has been given free reign to create a monumental sculpture that will celebrate the Australian farmer. They asked me to uh, design something which reflects community life. Yeah, basically that this is a symbol of sun, this uh, uh, wheat and sheep. It's got also elements of uh, like family, community, past and the future. This is my side, so we got little hump here. <laughs> The other side, the female, more rounded, and you can see a few missing seeds, which represents uh, dry years. It shows how important this sculpture is for the town here. It will stop people for sure. And uh, if they stay a couple of days here, look around and leave a few dollars, it will be good for the town. <laughs> For a farming community to commission an expensive sculpture during a drought is a controversial plan. Oh, well, there are some naysayers. They're not convinced. And some people, a statue like that is a little bit different. You know, we're born and bred farmers without exposure to culture. So it's taken some people a while to get their mindset around that. Some people just can't see that spending that amount of money is good for the area. You know, they're not convinced. They'd rather see a, another road or something like that, I suppose. But... What I can see of it just driving past there, it's, I'm not real sure what it represents really. Well, we've had two droughts and the previous two years weren't real flash and the prices were shocking. And to start spending money like this is uh, quite ridiculous. I think uh, you'd find myself and probably some of the other councillors would various times wake up at three or four o'clock in the morning saying, have we got this right? but the advantages and the necessity to do it outweighs the risk. The Martins have come to the council to sign their dollar block contract, but they have some concerns about how they will be received by the community. Is everyone in the so community the happy away, about yes. bringing people in, giving away blocks for a dollar? Someone could have bought a block of land the week before for whatever the going price is, but I think they all want to build up their town too. But for Tim, this signing is confirmation that his plans, however risky or radical, are better than doing nothing at all. If we don't keep Woodna surviving, we're not going to have any towns or communities that survive. So take your pick. It's either run with what we've got and build that up, or uh, let's just walk away and the last one out and switch off the lights. Tim's a dynamo. You know, you've, you've seen Tim and I don't know where he finds the time quite frankly because he's got a meeting this morning, he's got a meeting yesterday probably and he runs a farm as well and, and he's an ideas man and he's prepared to carry through the ideas. On top of the dollar block scheme and the sculpture, Tim is juggling a number of other lifelines for Woodner. At the moment I'm probably as stressed as I ever likely to get. We've got three, maybe four major projects. We're building a medical centre which is you know, it's a million dollar project in its own right and we've got a uh, proposal to get uh, flights happening out of Woodner to uh, the mining towns and that is at the stage where we're just waiting for an answer back from the state government for a bit of support. We've got a major water infrastructure project happening and we're also talking with miners about doing some external road building. As Mayor, Tim's fight for Woodner's survival is matched only by his own struggle as a farmer. With no rain in sight, the drought is taking its toll on all fronts. Unless we make reasonable money on the farm, we're not going to be on the farm. It's as simple as that. Two bad years where last year we were closer to break even, the year before was pretty much a disaster. And we've got to make serious money just to stay here as a farm. Just at the moment, I'm sort of trying to juggle a thousand things and struggling a bit to do it. Yeah, it gets frustrating and lots of things don't get done that should get done. That, that's a bit annoying. And as long as he um, gives up council maybe next time round and starts to stay home and clean up everything <laughs> before he gets too old, uh, it'll be all right. Probably he's got too good an imagination. He always dreams up these things that need to be done or should happen or wouldn't or should have. And so then he goes off and does them and uh, then he remembers he's got a home sometimes. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from really, just because he just thinks it's a great place to live. Yeah. And he wants our kids and everyone else's kids to have a good future. I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, I guess, the family I grew up in and, and I had what I consider to be a very, 
very astute father, and um, you know he's he's been gone from the community for for 24, 25 years. Tim's mother Jean was born in Woodner and has lived here for all her 86 years. That's uh, this is my husband and I just before he died, and I nursed him here all the time. <laughs> I said to him, what's going to happen to me when I've got to be nursed? He said, well, you've got a good family, they'll look after you. <laughs> so... <laughs> For whatever reason, he's left me with a sense that we've all got to play a part, and no part's too small. From the heydays of her youth, Jean has watched the steady decline of Woodner. I'm sad about the, the loss of the people. We used to have two football teams here at Pyre and two netball teams, all gone. So that part of it is, is a sadness to me. Like his father before him, Tim is a counsellor and is determined to do his best for the town. Well, I think he's pretty wonderful. I know now why I had him, because of what he's doing now. Join me again after the break as Mayor Schultz's grand plans reach the moment of truth.